As you breathe, or inhale and exhale, varying amounts of air moves into and out of the lungs. The amount that moves in and out can depend on many different factors that are related to the characteristics of healthy individuals or people that have pulmonary disorders. So the two different amounts of air can be classified into lung volumes, which can be measured directly using a spirometer, and lung capacities, which are combinations of the different volumes. The device that's used to measure these volumes and capacities is called a spirometer. So spiro means breathe. Meter is a measuring device. So the record that's created is a spirogram where inhalation is recorded as an upward deflection. Okay, so you're increasing volume. Exhalation is shown as a downward deflection as you decrease volume. So lung volumes and capacities are larger in males, taller individuals, young people, people who live at higher altitudes, and people who don't suffer from obesity. So various disorders can be diagnosed by a comparison of the actual versus predicted values when you look at a person's gender, their height, and their age. This slide shows you a spirogram of a normal, average, healthy adult. And you can see that each of the volumes are shown as deflections, upward or downward, and your capacities are going to be combinations of those volumes. A healthy adult averages about 12 breaths a minute, with each inhale and exhale moving about 500 millimeter, or excuse me, milliliters of air into and out of the lungs. The volume of one normal breath is called the tidal volume. Tidal volume can vary considerably from one person to another and in the same person at different times, depending on what's going on with that person, right? By taking a very deep breath, you can inhale a lot more, though, than that tidal volume of 500 milliliters. This additional air is called the inspiratory reserve. Remember, reserve is when you have more of something. So the inspiratory reserve is about 3,100 milliliters in the average adult male and about 1,900 milliliters in the average adult female. Even more air can be inhaled if you inhale follows a forced exhalation. So if you inhale normally, then exhale as forcibly as possible, you should be able to push out considerably more air in addition to that 500 milliliters of tidal volume. The extra 1,200 milliliters in males and 700 milliliters in female is called the expiratory reserve. How much more can you push out forcefully? Forced expiratory volume in one second, or FEV1, is the volume of air that can be exhaled from the lungs in one second with maximum effort following a maximum inhalation. Typically, you see with chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease a very reduced FEV1 because COPD increases the resistance in the airways, so it's much harder to push that air out. But even after the expiratory reserve volume is pushed out, there's still air in the lungs, so they never completely deflate. This volume can't be measured using spirometry, and it's called the residual volume, and usually is about 100 and or, I'm sorry, 1,200 milliliters in males and 1,100 milliliters in females. Now, this is normal, but if the thoracic cavity is opened, the intrapleural pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure, and that's going to force some of the residual volume uh, out of the pleural cavity. So the air remaining that doesn't get moved out is called the minimal volume. Minimal volume provides a medical and legal tool for determining whether a baby is born dead, what we call stillborn, or died after birth. The presence of minimal volume can be demonstrated by placing a piece of lung tissue in water to see if it floats. Fetal tissue contains no air. Remember, they're in the uterus. They're not breathing 
the atmosphere. So the lung of a stillborn baby that was born dead that never took air into the lungs will not float in that water. All right, so those are volumes. Now let's look at capacities. Lung capacities are combinations of lung volumes. Inspiratory capacity is the sum of the tidal volume and the inspiratory reserve. So how much do you breathe in normally and how much more can you forcefully inhale? Functional residual capacity is the sum of the residual volume and the expiratory reserve. So residual volume, how much can you not push out, right? And your expiratory reserve, how much more can you push out? So that gives you your functional capacity of how much uh, is in the lungs. Your vital capacity is the sum of inspiratory reserve, tidal volume, and expiratory reserve. And then finally, we have total lung capacity, which is the sum of vital capacity residual and residual capacity. Now, you will use these in a lab with a spirometer and learn how to calculate these once you have your volumes. Now, these are useful in assessing pulmonary function and to determine the air that flows in and out of the lungs in one minute. That's called minute ventilation, so it's the total volume of air inspired and expired each minute. And it's tidal volume times respiratory rate. So if your normal respiratory rate is 12 breaths per minute and tidal volume is 500 milliliters per breath, tidal volume, that gives you 6,000 milliliters per minute. So a lower than normal minute ventilation is usually a sign that there's some type of pulmonary disorder.